Hey, welcome uh, to a special web edition of our show with Gloria Vanderbilt and, of course, her son, Anderson Cooper, author, uh, authors of the book The Rainbow Comes and Goes and the documentary on HBO, Nothing Left Unsaid. I was so nervous during the TV part of this. I, I know. I'm, I, so, I'm much more relaxed. I'm glad I know. we're doing a new episode. I'm glad the whole TV thing's gone. I don't know gone. why whenever it's a webisode, um, we think that nobody's seeing it. Well, it's also, so crazy. Also, during the commercial breaks, they kept pressuring me about having children. Which I was like, is, well, this because, isn't really a good time. Like, do we really need to bring this up now? Because your mom and I agree that you would make an incredible father. Yes. I think that you should have children. I have yes. said this to you and Benjamin. I think that you would be amazing fathers. I'm working two jobs. I, I don't know that I don't okay. have the time. Listen, I have kids. Strahan works 19 jobs. He has four kids. <laughs> You can do it. It can be done. Yeah. Yes, I and know. I will give you my womb and whatever <laughs> else. You <can> do. <laughs> huh? I how can you pass know. that opportunity? I don't know. I'm not sure how that works exactly. I, yeah. I don't know, but there's a Cameron Diaz wrote a medical book. <laughs> <laughs> so we spent a year basically changing the conversation, having a new conversation in this book, and I basically just started on my mom's 91st birthday. I started asking her questions about things that I didn't know about her life because I didn't want there to be anything that was left unsaid between us. I didn't want, you know, when my dad died when I was 10, I always imagined that there was this letter that he had written me that would show up on my birthday or, or on an important event kind of telling me all about his life and who he was. And it turns out my mom had the same, yes, you had that same, same fantasy, fantasy about your yeah. father. Because my father died when I was 15 months old. Right. And I always had a fantasy that he had written a letter to me telling me how much he loved me and how beautiful I was going to become and how brilliant I was going to be and how fantastic a daughter I was and, mm. uh, you know, on and on along those lines. And uh, that he had put it in a bottle and uh, thrown it into the uh, ocean and uh, that I would find it. Mm. And um, then, of course, a lot of bottles floated by. With <laughs> but never the right ones. No, it's so never interesting the right one. when, you th when you think about it, because um, I've been fortunate enough to have been you know, uh, um, raised by my parents, and yes. they're both alive today. And I'm, I'm so, I feel so fortunate, especially when I hear the two of you talk about how you know, losing a parent yeah. at an early age or n having never known your father, really, mm -hmm. um, it, it leaves its mark in a way that everything seems um, possible, right? You say well, about as father I quote uh, right. Mary, Mary, Mary. Mary Gordon right. in the book, who's uh, part of the quote is, uh, a fatherless uh, girl feels all things possible and nothing safe. Right. And that's absolutely true. Yeah. And then at 10, uh, your grandmother and your nurse schemed with your aunt to, uh, to sue for custody against your own mother and the, there was a, this giant trial. It was called the trial of the century at the mm -hmm. time, at the height of the Depression. It was the biggest trial that had ever occurred. There were 100 reporters in the courtroom that first on, throughout the entire trial. And you were taken away from your mother by the courts and given to this aunt who you really didn't even know. I didn't even know, actually, that the Vanderbilt family existed in America because my mother took me to Paris as soon as um, uh, you know, my father died. And the courts decided she was unfit Yes. And part of which was because she was accused of being a lesbian. And this was, of course, in 1934. We have to sort of think of it in those terms. I mean, today that is not, would not be considered a, 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 you know, but in those days, I mean, Oscar Wilde was put in jail for mm. it. People were, were killed for it. It was a, a terrible, a terrible, terrible sin. Mm. And that really affected you for much of your life. For much of my that life. That fear that you, in fact, yes, would be gay. Yes, yes, And so when I came out to you, uh, was it strange? Well, no, I had, I had worked it. I mean, I, it, 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 you know, it took me a long time, but I, I worked it out uh, through my intelligence and my uh, knowing. Um, Lots of gay people. Well, couples like Jose Quintero, who was a, a dear friend who, uh, uh, had a, a, a partner and, and they were like husband and wife and, and then it, it, I came to realize there is no difference between love between man and man and woman and woman uh, or man and woman. It, it's love and, and it's, it's something to be rejoiced. Mm. 
And so when, when, uh, when you met Anderson's father, Wyatt Cooper, that really, uh, for me, in, in the documentary, it sort of seemed to be a, a changing point in your life where you had this uh, a more, a, a more of a traditional family, would you say? Like he a, really showed he you showed what a family could be. Yes, absolutely. And he came from a, a, a family of, I mean, literally, he had like six, six or seven brothers and sisters. Right. And this huge family, as big as his whole audience, more, bigger, bigger. Mm. I mean, mm. it was as if he was related to everybody in, 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 in the South, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and they were all related, and it was very strange for me to, you know, for having come from a, a very good, sort of different kind of, uh, uh, um, you know, family to suddenly meet all these new relatives. And uh, The incredible thing, I think, about my mom is that you know, she's been through tremendous, she's experienced many losses. The death of my dad, uh, my brother's suicide uh, in 1988, um, and who was, you know, my brother was 23 and he killed himself in, in front of my mom. Um, and yet, you've been able to continue forward. Did you always knew that you had that, that strength, that drive? Well, I, I, I'm determined, you know. I, I mean, I really am determined to to do the best I can and to keep uh, keep going and um, I'm just determined, you know. Mm. And I also do believe, as we've titled the book, The Rainbow Comes and Goes. I mean, you, it's part of living to, to go through tragedies and then the rainbow comes and, and then comes back. Comes back. But you're, you're the biggest optimist I know. I'm completely pessimistic. Yes, I'm, you are. Yeah, and I, I, it's true. I'm a total catastrophist. I believe, yeah, sure, maybe the rainbow comes back, but how do you know you'll be there where it comes back? Like, <laughs> what if it comes back around the corner and you don't actually see it? I think that you two are so similar, though. When I watched the documentary and even just even in the reading of your words, you both sound so similar to me. Although you are more pessimistic, you are more optimistic. You are very similar. Well, in I, that's what I discovered, and in, 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 I think that's what's so cool and why I, I sort of really just hope this book encourages people to start a new conversation with someone in their life, because, as particularly with an aging parent before it's too late, because I learned so much not only about my mom's life, which I never knew, um, but also about myself and how similar we are. And, that, and that, I learned about you too. And that drive, yeah. that determination she has, I realize I have that as well. It, it sort of shows itself in different forms, but um, you know, it's, it's a similar drive to kind of move forward through whatever obstacle occurs. You said that thing about, uh, you watched the Jacques Cousteau documentary on the sharks, and you learned that if Yeah, when I was a kid, I watched a Jacques Cousteau documentary, and I learned that sharks have to keep moving in order to breathe. They for it's the only way they can force water through their gills. And that image is always stuck in my mind, of kind of always needing to move, to move forward uh, in order to continue to, to breathe. If, if Anderson had gotten married to a woman, who would you have it, uh, preferred it be, me or Kathy Griffin? <laughs> this is a tough one. This is, this the, tough, is, this tough is the most one. important question you'll ever be asked. This is a question that I... Kathy Griffin is a dear, dear friend. You are my fantasy daughter. Okay, so, <laughs> Kathy, I think we have the answer. <laughs> Kathy is also a fantasy daughter, a different kind, you know, yes. a different personality fantasy daughter, a fantasy daughter. Um, why not both? No, I can't have both. <laughs> you can have both. No, I'm very, no. I'm very liberal. I'm very no, generous. No, I, I'm very no, generous. No. Okay, fine. It's done. <laughs> now, I also... Uh, so many people in the audience, I have to say, when they heard you were coming on the show, talk about you as a fashion designer and, of course, your iconic Gloria Vanderbilt jeans and how that really revolutionized uh, the fashion industry uh, at the time. And there you are with that picture of the, you know, I, I remember my first pair. But what I, what I learned about you uh, through Anderson is that you're such a great artist, and I, I didn't know that before, that you are such a, you're an accomplished artist. Well, that's really where I live, you know. My, yeah, my mom's been, you know, painting mm -hmm. since she was a child, and, and uh, uh, she's having a show at First Dibs uh, at the end of this month, and uh, oh, she has a website, uh, Gloria Vanderbilt Fine Arts, where you can look at mm -hmm. some of her artwork as well. But, but the doc that's what's great about the documentary, is it really shows her as an artist and shows, 
sort of the importance of her. And you have a you have a painting. Of I do. In your I have. House. I, oh, I you have on. You have one of my favorites. It's it's, yes. it's, uh, it's our it's our um, very our, our very um, favorite possession. And you know it fits so perfectly. Did you? And you have I couldn't to, believe you it. You have to come over in, and see in, it in, in person. In, in, in Kelly's living room, it just. Was it's made. over the mantelpiece. It's over the yeah. mantelpiece. It was, yeah. but it was like it was made for for it. Then. We feel like it was made yeah. for us. We yeah. always feel like it is us. Mark and I look at it oh, and we I'm feel so like happy. it's us. What do you hope the people get from the book? What do I hope? Yeah. Um, well, I hope that they can relate to it as if they're talking to themselves in a certain sense, uh, and that they will look. Love is all. I mean, this is really what it's all about. And it's all that we really have in the world and what's important. And we have to love each other and we have to be close to those who are related to us and those that we love. And I hope this book will, will make people not be afraid to expose how they feel, to say how they feel, and to love each other more because love is all, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anderson Cooper, my dear friend, make sure you uh, go out and get The Rainbow come, Comes and Goes. It's available today, right? That's right. It just came out today. As a matter of fact, I downloaded it, and yeah. my download came today. Yeah. And uh, also, make sure you see Nothing Left Unsaid, Gloria Vanderbilt and Anderson Cooper. It will debut Saturday at 9 p.m. on HBO. This was nice. Yeah, yeah. This was great. Thank you for sticking around.